Good morning, church. Oh, that was nice. Thank you. A couple of announcements for you. If you would well, listen as the bell gets set and we all get settled, look at the, at the second page on your, in your bulletin. Next Saturday is Cookie Saturday. We're going to roll out cookies. The kids are going to roll out cookies, uh, make, uh, cut them with Christmas decorations, and then we're going to, after, they, after they're baked and cooled, we're going to decorate them. But we need dough. Now we're going to take the offering later, but I'm talking about, I'm talking about cookie dough. Oh, we need that kind of dough also. But anyway, uh, we need cookie dough. It's, it's really easy. We need uh, probably 20 or 30 at least of you to make cookie dough and double or triple recipes. It's too easy to make a single recipe. It works better in the bowl to make a double or a triple. So please bring that in this week, put it in the refrigerator here at church so we can do that on Saturday and then on Sunday after the children's program, after the children's pageant this coming Sunday, we will be uh, having a reception and we'll be eating those cookies. Doesn't that sound good? And other things. This is Christ the King Sunday. Does anybody know what that means? Raise your hand if you know what that means. I'm not going to ask you to... I didn't think so. Okay. Christ the King Sunday is a very important Sunday in the church year. Okay. Next week starts Advent. It's the first Sunday of Advent. Advent is what? It's a time of waiting for the celebration of the coming of the Christ. So, Christ the King Sunday, we have gone through from last Advent until this Sunday. We have read through the accounts of Jesus. We have looked at the Hebrew Scripture. We have done all the things that we needed to do to know who Christ is, who our God is, and what it is that we as God's people need to know. And so today we can truly say, Christ is my King. Can we see that? Let's try it. Christ is my King. Christ is my King. Oh man, that was puny. Once again, Christ is my King. Amen, brothers and sisters. Amen. Are there any other announcements that come from the floor? Jay. If you look in the uh, bulletin, there's a uh, Midwest mission uh, uh, announcement, but what's missing is that I need to know if there's two more of you that want to go, you need to tell me by November 30th. It, we, I, have, I have to turn in some money uh, for the work assignments, okay? So if there's two more of you want to go, I think we can find a place for you. You'll have a good time and they'll feed you well. Let's go to the Lord and worship.
So we come before you in this day, humbled by your presence here, thrilled that we are asked to come into your courts so you can hear our petitions. Lord, most of all, we have come to you to give thanks. Thanksgiving for all that you give us, each day, each breath, for all that we have to be thanks, thankful for, you have given to us. Almighty God, we pray for the world as it continues to seem to want to war. 
We pray for the events of the weather that seem to be getting more dramatic and more drastic and more often. Lord, help the, the people that are still recovering from the massive hurricane and also those in Buffalo who are, who are in and some of them without power. There's five to six feet of snow. Lord, hear us. Hear us. We pray for all of those in, in this day that would love to be here or in another church and to be worshiping you, but because of health or other reasons, they must be at home in hospitals and nursing homes and can't get to your temple. You know their names. We call them in our hearts. Oh Lord, we pray for the leaders of the world the leaders of this community, those just elected and those who, Lord, have been elected or around the world have just claimed the power. That they hear you within their hearts and some maybe for the first time. And they heed your words and your direction. Come, O Holy Spirit, come. We give this to you in the name of Jesus with his prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day in our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. But lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Rise the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for it. Children, come on up.
Okay. Oh, your nails. You got your whole nails are, are they're, they're painted also? Oh, wow. Cool. Hey, guys. I want you to do something for me. Hi. Hi. I want you to watch the video that's going to appear up there because we're going to talk about it. Okay. Pumpkin pie? Well, it looks like. Come on, you're like 50 years old. You should know how pie looks. 50? <laughs> Come on. Can you even count, count to 50? Uncle Jeff, I got some questions for you. Yes? Why do we have turkey on Thanksgiving? Because when cooked properly, every four or five years, it's delicious. Okay, so then why would we have green bean casserole then? <coughs> Touche. <sighs> well, I don't know how to look like, but about the pie. Uh, clearly it's not stopping you. Why did mom have a full plate of stuffing when she's on keto? Because carbs are comforting. Why can't I just lick my plate? If I'm in charge of the dishes, I actually encourage that. Why does water taste different in Nana's house? Why is Grandpa allowed to have salt? Why is Grady brown? Why are not allowed to touch the air freshener? Why does Cooper pick his nose so much? Why does Mom call me by my sister's name? Why do we plant all the time? Why can't I eat grass? Why can't I sit in Dad's chair? Why is Sunday school called Sunday school? Why do cows have four stomachs? Why do parents whisper when they get mad? Why do old people write in person? Why do babies have no teeth? Why is why do fish have no lungs? Why is Thanksgiving before Christmas? I know why. You know why what? I know why Thanksgiving comes right before Christmas. <sighs> okay. So, why does Thanksgiving come right before Christmas? Because it reminds us to be thankful that God sent us Jesus. some of that whipped cream, girl. So, what did you hear in that? What is this? She asked a lot of questions. She did ask a lot of questions. I heard Sunday school. You heard what? Sunday school. She said, why, like, so much, like, she knows so much. What else did you hear? What happened at the end? Do you remember what happened at the end? Um, she squirted the whipped cream in her, his mouth. That, that's right, and boy, did that look good, didn't it? Woo! And, well, uh, right before that, what happened? And she also put whipped cream in her mouth. That, that was the way she started, yeah? She took the pumpkin pie piece. She said that Thanksgiving comes before Christmas because we're, we should be thankful that Jesus, that God brought us Jesus. Exactly. We should be thankful that God brought Jesus to us at Christmas because we're going to celebrate Christmas and then next Saturday, next Saturday, what's going to happen? A lot of the people out there and probably most of you guys are going to be here on Saturday, okay? And you're going to, and you're going to be you're going to be uh, doing cookies, and it's the next Saturday that we're having the de decorating, right? Right, and we're going to also decorate the church. So all the Christmas things are going up next next uh, next Saturday. So we're going to have a lot going on on Saturday, and you guys have practice for the Christmas pageant, which will be on Sunday. Next is coming Sunday, so we're gonna we're gonna give thanks to Jesus in all kinds of ways, and we're gonna cut our cookies that look like Christmas trees and bells and all kinds of things, and we're gonna and we're gonna decorate them so we can celebrate Christmas, and we're gonna give thanks. 
What does giving thanks mean? Being thankful for all the things that you have in life. Thank you. That's awesome. And how are you? How are you all going to give thanks around your your Thanksgiving table this year? Do you know? Does. I have a suggestion for you on what to do before you get to your table, to your Thanksgiving table dinner. Okay, you're all gonna, you're, you're all gonna probably go to grandma's and grandpa's houses or you're gonna have them at your house, right? Okay, why don't you color a picture or draw a picture that you can share at the table of something that you're thankful for? I'll bet you that your moms and dads would really like that and I know that your grandma and grandpas would like that. They would think that would be awesome, wouldn't they? Um, and there's snow outside. And that's good for Thanksgiving and Christmas, isn't it? It's also good for the deer hunters. All right, okay, let's stand and have, and have a prayer. Let's form a circle. Get everybody in the circle. Anybody have one special thing they want to say thanks for? Thank you, Lord, for all that you provide us that we might eat and be healthy. And Lord, we pray for those that don't have food, especially those in Ukraine and other areas where food is so scarce right now. So we thank you that you are providing for us in ways that we can't, so many ways that we can't even talk about it because there's too many. Lord, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, guys. Heather, where are you? Ah, follow Heather. Our first reading is from Jeremiah 23, verses 1 through 6. Woe to the shepherds who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to the shepherds who tend my people. Because you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not bestowed care on them, I will bestow punishment on you for the evil you have done, declares the Lord. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them and will bring them back to their pasture, where they will be fruitful and increase in number. I will place shepherds over them who will tend them, and they will no longer be afraid or terrified, nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. This is the name of, by which you will be called, the Lord, our righteous Savior. And our second reading is from Colossians 1, 11 through 20. Being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness, and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sins. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together, and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. 
Please stand if you're able for the reading of the Gospel, which is from Luke 23, verses 33 through 43. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing, and they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There is a written notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't not don't fear excuse me, don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has said nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
I'm going to talk today about Thanksgiving, so we will pick up our study of five of the five traits of a fruitful congregation in two weeks. Uh, John Tunnicliffe will be here next week, and I will be back from California from visiting my son so and his family for Thanksgiving. Uh, wish me luck that, I, that the plane will hold me when I come back. <laughs> He's a great cook. Uh, <clears throat> I have titled my message this morning, Don't Be a Turkey. Don't be a turkey. Please pray with me. Almighty God, still our hearts and our minds, we have heard your word read. Now, Lord, as your word is proclaimed, bring it to our hearts the way we need to hear it. In Christ's name. Amen. I want to read from Luke. If you turn to Luke, the 17th chapter. Luke, the 17th chapter, beginning in verse 11. It's a story that many of you know. It's a story of the, of the ten lepers. So Luke 17, starting in 11. Now on his way to Jerusalem, and Jesus was now walking to Jerusalem, going towards, as the scripture this morning uh, indicated actually going towards what he knew would be his death. Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Were has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. There is little question that commercially grown turkey is pound for pound one of nature's less intelligent creatures or maybe least intelligent creatures. At least according to an article that I, that I saw. In the article, author Fred McGinnis calls a domestic, domesticated turkey as brainless as a baseball and describes how turkeys can have trouble doing even very simple things. Those of us that grew up on, on farms or have farms know this to be absolutely true. For example, the average turkey can get into trouble doing something as simple as eating. Turkeys have been known to starve to death next to a mountain of food. But other times they eat so much and they eat it so quickly that they totally fill their gullets, they can't breathe, and they die of choking. Drinking water can be a problem for turkeys also. Turkey farmers frequently find, drowned, find them drowned in shallow troughs. If a turkey is outdoors, looking up at the sky when it starts to rain and, and its mouth is open, it'll die of drowning. By the way, some of us don't know when to close our mouths either. So I'll try to keep this message relatively short so we can go fill our mouths. Is that, is that a deal? Okay. All right. At least a turkey has the excuse for being bird brain. Uh, Sometimes there is less excuse for, for human beings. And take the nine lepers, if you would. As Luke just as wrote, wrote in, our, in our lesson that I just read, didn't that group include some pretty big turkeys? Jesus had, had just given them a tremendous gift. He had healed all ten from a, a, a disgusting, painful, and unslightly skin disease. You know, of course, now today, they, it's healed with cream, but at, the, at that time, they were actually 
put in, in colonies and couldn't go out and see their families or anything. Even more important than he, he had made it possible for them to re-enter society and to be reunited, re reunited with their families. Ten lepers were healed, but only one leper. And a Samaritan at that, a foreigner, came back and said, thanks. There are relatively few things in the gospel accounts that actually surprise Jesus. In most situations, he seems to know or does know what's going to happen before it occurs. But in this case, even Jesus seems to register surprise in the way it is written. We're not ten healed? He asked, and he says it, I'm sure he said it incredulously. Where are the other nine? Jesus was astonished by their ingratitude. Ten, ten received God's blessing, only one, and ten stopped to say thanks. What about us? What about us? Thanksgiving Day is approaching. We're going to have Thanksgiving dinner right after church with all the brothers and sisters that are here. Okay, and, and among which group will you be found? Among the nine who forgot? Or among the one who came back to thank God? Nobody wants to be a turkey. If, we, if, we, if you want to avoid being turkeys at Thanksgiving, the behavior of the tenth leper in Luke's lesson might prove instructive. What was there that was about, that this man was about, what was there about this man, better way to say it, that set him apart? First, first, it says in verse 15 that I just read, when the man saw that he was healed, he came back and gave thanks. So the first step in, in thanksgiving is perceiving. Perceiving. That means seeing the ways that we're being blessed. God has given different creatures different ways of seeing. As an example, the, the hawk's vision is eight times more, more acute, more accurate than ours. A bee has a different kind of vision. Its eyes have some 15,000 facets that enable it to see the sun in one single dot and to navigate long distances with the sun or the moon as, as a reference. A kingfisher has two different kinds of vision. One for, for spotting fish that are close to the, to the water or on top of the water and another vision for seeing fish under the water. There are different ways of seeing, and we, we, we may need to see things in different ways if we are to experience the full measure of our own blessings. As an example, some of the blessings ought to be easy to see. Maybe, maybe some of us here this morning, like the leper in the story, have been healed from a terrible, from a terrible illness this year. This past year, I learned that I had been healed from stage 4 cancer. Be believe me, I, I am grateful beyond imagination. When I was diagnosed with stage 4, I, I stood in the pulpit and I declared victory from the disease. Now, I knew it would be healed, I'd be healed either here or I'd be healed in Christ's arms and in heaven. And I will tell you that I fully expected Christ to heal me here in this realm because I was still feeling very strongly the ministry of, a, a pull to the ministry of reconciliation and, and rebuilding. Maybe there have been, been other dramatic good things that have happened to you or, or to your family in this past year. All of us here this morning are profoundly lucky we're lucky to be living where we are in, in America, and not in Iraq or Afghanistan or in Uvalde, Texas, or the storm path of Hurricane Ian or some other troubled areas around the kingdom. We're all blessed to have plenty to eat. We're blessed that we can go home to a warm, comfortable, 
residence. And we don't have to sleep in a shelter, on a heating grate, on a sidewalk on some city street. Some of our blessings ought to be completely obvious. Maybe other blessings require another kind of seeing, okay, because they're more subtle. Can you thank God this Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving not only for the good things that happened, but also for the bad things that didn't happen? Those problems and, and, and disasters that you worried so much about that didn't happen. Can you look at it a different way and, and see some sort of blessing even in the problems that you do face? George Matheson, a, a Scottish preacher, put it, quote, I've thanked God a thousand times for my roses. Now I've, I've got to learn to thank God for my thorns. Unquote. George Matheson happened to be blind, which is a pretty significant thorn. In the end, Matheson was able to see with his spiritual eyes. So he, he saw hidden blessings in his blindness. He found, he found his lack of sight forced him to become a better listener, to be more patient with others, to be more willing to receive the help and the care of others, to be more sensitive to other people's sufferings. It's also helpful, math, to, it also helped Matheson to, to identify with, with the Apostle Paul who had his own thorn in the flesh. Most importantly, blindness helped Matheson better to appreciate the sacrifices and the sufferings of Jesus, who not only had his own thorn, but he wore a crown of thorns. A first step in the 10th leper's journey to thanksgiving was simply seeing and perceiving. There is a, a possibility that we, that if we think just a little about that, we also can find different ways of seeing our blessings. So we notice secondly, that the leper went beyond seeing. He went, to, went from seeing to say, seen to say. Luke writes, continuing on in verse 15, when he, the lepers, saw that he was healed, he turned back, praising God with a loud voice. The lepers' thanksgiving began with perception, then moved to proclamation. He took the time to actually say thank you to God. There's an old proverb that goes this way. It says, Troubled person tastes, uh, pardon me, the thankful person tastes his joy twice. The thankful person tastes his joy twice. She or he tastes it when it, when it, ha when it happens, and they taste it again when they're speaking about it. If we go to an art gallery and view a beautiful work of art, or go to the, to the movies and watch a movie, that really moves us, part of the joy and, and wonder of those experiences is expressing our gratitude and our appreciation for the gifts of that artist or of the artist that we saw. That's why we watch the Christmas movie. Bless you. That's why we watch the Christmas movie, It's a Wonderful Life. Back, come on back. That's why we watch the Christmas movie, It's a Wonderful Life. It's because of the artistry of James Stewart. We watch him give thanksgiving for a life lived by, by mistakes, but lived fully. It's, it's why we watch movies with James Arness and Tom Cruise. We can't remember what the movie was about, but we, we give thanks for watching these great actors and actresses perform the magic on the, on the big screen. I sat yesterday in my office and gave thanks for some grave mistakes that I've experienced in my lifetime and also, which I've done, unknowingly. But I give thanks 
for those ex experiences as they are part of who I am. We've ne we're not meant to keep gratitude and appreciated bottled up inside. We're not, we're not made that way. This Thanksgiving, if we, have, if we have things to be thankful about, we need to say our thanks to each other and to God. Let me suggest some, some practical applications for this Thanksgiving. Make plans, if you would, in your household to thank you to God. You may want to, want to write down what, you, what you're thankful for on a piece of, on a placemat, okay? And use those placemats on your table for celebration. Have, have the children that are gathering sit down and color thanks on those placemats and then put them under every plate. You want to sh share those, your thanks that you've written down and, and around, around in a fashion around the Thanksgiving table. Maybe, maybe the children can just plain draw a picture like I was mentioning to them and present their picture at the table. What fun that would be. I've, no, I've done it. I've seen it. It makes it pale, it makes the whole dinner pale because you're so thankful by the time they're done. Maybe, maybe your family could join in a Thanksgiving praise hymn, some type of song. Say your blessing by singing it. Or a brief Thanksgiving service with the bread in the cup and, and read the scripture of the great Thanksgiving meal from the Bible. You might want to look, up, look for and read some of the wonderful songs of, of thanksgiving. To properly thank God, we must not only see what we're thankful for, but we must be able to say it. That's the second lesson we learn from the leper who returned. The third lesson is not in the scripture, but it's tradition. It's tradition in that part of the world, all through Samaria and Judea. Tradition has it that this tenth leper was the one who spread the good news about Jesus Christ throughout Samaria. Tradition has it that he, a healed leper, said, said, paid particular attention to telling other lepers how Jesus had made him whole. Is it true? Is it true? I don't know. It's a tradition. But he also shared, come on up, honey, come on. Come on. Don't, don't get her. It's a tradition, but he shared it, okay? Thanks, after all, is only half of the word thanksgiving. I've preached many sermons holding a child. It's, it's the most incredible thing, okay? Thank, you know, thanks is only part of the word thanksgiving. Giving is the other, other half of the word. Herbert Hoover, who was not the most notable or quotable of American president, although he did come from Iowa, he said this, he said, give for the joy of giving and sing hymns of thankfulness that you have something to give. We are all very fortunate to have something to give. In the West Virginia hills, they have a custom, and I lived many years very, very close to the West Virginia Hills when I was in the Shenandoah Valley for so many years. They have a custom of, of setting in an extra place and an extra chair at the Thanksgiving table. It's a reminder that there are always be there will always be people in need, and we need to make room in our hearts and in our giving for people in need. Get a picture of her, just so you know. Our brother's keeper, our brother's keeper, which is a, a ministry of uh, that we have here at Trinity. Our brother's keeper is a way that we provide funds for those that that need help in all kinds of different ways. Reverend Leonard Sweet, great preacher of our time, was writing in the book Homiletics in the magazine Homiletics how some. How, and he has some perspectives on things to say about the holiday that is before us. He writes this, quote, Thanksgiving itself is becoming a kind of great divide separating the haves and the have-nots. For the haves, 
Thanksgiving is the starting, is the starting gun for a, of the first frantic round of holiday shopping. Isn't this the biggest shopping day with the biggest sales in, in your community? Those that have even more may use this long weekend as a time for the first skiing vacation of the winter. With enough time and enough money, you can find snow somewhere, and this year especially around Buffalo, New York. For the have-nots, Thanksgiving marks the new beginning as well. Hear, hear, hear that. For the have-nots, Thanksgiving marks a new beginning as well. For the have-nots. In the have-not culture, Thanksgiving is the first disappointment of the holiday season.